a concussion is like a bruise of the brain. But when you bruise your arm, you have really good circulatory system. Like you got yeah. veins and arteries pumping and, you, and your, your stuff is moving in and out. And so when you need to get material from this part of your body to that part of your body, you can, you have the circulatory system. The brain isn't designed to take a punch. Okay. In it's a, so it, it's, it's a contained it's a area so you, system. Right. And so it's got to fix itself there in situ. And so when you get a concussion, that area is usually, you get an inflammatory component, it can't catch up. And this is where the plasmalogens come in, the omega-9, the proton glia, and also mitochondrial support, and acetylcysteine carnitine are very, very powerful at reducing concussion outcomes. Wow. And, you can, and if, you, if you take these omega-9 plasmalogens plus some mitochondrial support before a football game, you pretty well can't get a concussion. Because what happens like when you get when you when we do brain experiments where we look at um, brain damage, like we'll do an occlusion, for instance, a hypoxic occlusion for mm -hmm. ten minutes, five minutes. Yep. You don't see the brain damage till a week after. Wow. Okay. So the so infl inflammatory process takes that long to actually take. Well, place. then it feeds and it feeds and and, and it gradually builds up because you've what you've done is you create this insult. And, and it's, it's, it's a strong enough insult that it can't fix it, okay? And then the microglia of your body, which are designed to look for damage, they become very, very inflamed. And then that inflammation process creates more inflammation. And that's what autoimmune is, wow. essentially. So yeah, so if you, but if you can restore the membrane structure with, with plasmalogen precursors, then the microglia have no, there's no, no information. Yeah. So the, the, exactly like MS, if you look at MS lesions on yeah. MRI. So they, yeah, they, then they grow over, over time. So, so plasmalogens are in, so if we go into the chemistry of what this is, this is a phospholipid. This is something that we produce endogenously. Um, yeah. But as we get older, our ability to produce this and when we get knocks to the brain or we, we, we're we starting to, so, and this is affecting all systems. So it's not the brain, the body, um, everywhere is, is affected by these the mem membrane structures. I had Dr. Um, Bruce Lipton on the show a while ago, and he always talking about the, the membrane of the cell as being where the, in, the intelligence actually is, not so much the, 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 the DNA strand in the middle that we mm. always thought the intelligence was. You can take the DNA out and the cell will survive for a couple of months. You take the membrane away and it dies instantly. Um, and that the membrane is actually where it's all at. at. And the plasmalogens, they are in the membrane. So they're part of the membrane structure. Is it so? Is it this is like because when I'm like talking to clients about you know having good fats in their diet, um, and I'm trying to get them to swap out you know a good quality olive oil instead of their um, deep fried turkey fried chicken, um, right. and why? <laughs> because the we don't want those fats from the Kentucky fried chicken fat, the trans fats and things becoming the membranes of their cells. And then the, the integrity of those cells is, is, is not so good and stays around for a long time. Um, so is this the, the plasmalogens are the, the ultimate fat molecule, basically? It is. And at some point, you can't get them dietarily. You have to make them yourself. Right. They're, they're designed to be sacrificed, right? And they so the last step in their manufacture creates a bond called a vinyl ether bond. So, but you're right. The, the final molecule is a phospholipid. It's part, and, and so phospholipids are what create membranes. And it's membranes that give your body the compartmentalization. It's what separates your heart from your lungs, from your brain. Yep. And then inside your cells, it separates your mitochondria from your proxosome, from this and that. And so it's like your house. Like you can you do things in your it's kitchen, in your bathroom. Right, it's a physical structure and things go in and out of them. And so when you change that membrane structure, it messes up a whole lot of things. Shoot, shoot, and, shoot. And, they're, and they're maintained in situ. Like your cells, each and every one of your trillion cells maintains its own membrane. Okay, it has its own bakery. It has its own machinery inside of it, right? And so it needs the building material to do that. And it'll get some of those building materials from the local circulatory system and some it makes itself. Plasmalogens, so plasmalogens do it part of the membrane and they are modifiers of that membrane. 
because you have other false liquids as well. And they're what gives you membrane certain fluidity. So the omega-3, the DHA plasmalogens, they're what allow your neurons to actually transmit. Okay, so nerve transmission in the synapse, like when like your switch on the wall, how, how does signal go from one neuron to the next neuron? Okay, it's a biophysical process. Okay, you're not made of copper and wood. You're made of molecule of, of mm. biochemical okay. molecules. Yep. And that membrane on the on the synapse, the neurotransmitters are kind of contained in a little vesicle. Okay. And they're waiting for an action potential. When that happens, these vesicles translocate to the membrane, they fuse with the membrane and release their contents. That's mm -hmm. a physical process. It's 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 massive, massive in scale. Okay, the number of those little vesicles, those, those neurotransmitter containing vesicles in your brain are about the same number as the number of sands in the Hoover Dam. Basically wow. huge. And what's more important is that they have a Hertz rate of between 50 and 100, which means between 50 and 100 times per second, those vesicles are fusing, coming back, fusing and coming back. So you think of the Hoover, the Hoover Dam bursting in flames, and, and reforming, bursting and reforming, hundred times a second, and, and this is what it's, it's, it's mind-boggling, right? Yeah. And so, and that's not even counting your neuromuscular junction connections. So the, this is what gives the human body its kind of quantum mechanical power, and that's only possible because of plasmalogens. You need 70, 75 percent of the lipid in that synapse has to be plasmalogen, or that doesn't work. And so, and so your peroxisomes make them. And the other part is this, they're very potent antioxidants. They, they neutralize hydrogen peroxide. So mm -hmm. that's why the last step in their manufacture gives them these special powers. But as soon as they hit the hydrochloric acid in your stomach, they, they burst. And so you can't really take plasmalogens dietarily. Your body must make them. But the good news is, is that it makes it, it from scratch. So you don't, there's no, there's no vitamin or essential nutrient Okay, you can make plasmalogens from butter fat. You can make plasmalogens from canola oil. You can make plasmalogens from anything that can be digested into a acetyl-CoA molecule, like cholesterol. Your body can make cholesterol from the simplest building block of, of nature. So, but the thing is we make them. And the, the organelle that makes them is called the peroxisome. And it's very strange. It's one non-redundant system. And your peroxisomes are things that you, when you work out, you stimulate peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are, are so when people say, oh, you know, work out to lower your triglycerides. Well, if you're exercising and your exercise lowers your triglycerides, it's doing that by stimulating peroxisomes. Mm -hmm. It's turning peroxisomes on. And when you're fasting, the keto diet, the reason why the keto diet, one of the big reasons the keto and, and fasting is important is because it stimulates peroxisomes. Because when you're in the fasting state, it's these free fatty acids that your body uses to, to live on. And so peroxisomes digest free fatty acids. When you're in the fed state, you suppress your peroxisomes. And so as we get older, see, people think that we, we are genetically programmed to age, but we're not. We, what we do is we adapt to aging. We, the body gets more and more efficient as it gets older. It gets more and more, it's not, it's, it's, it, it, it tries to do less, it tries to do more with less. Wow. So when you start, when, when you're, when you start walking less, well, you says, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to generate all this energy if you're not going to use it. Right. So it's going to start tuning things down. And so it, you, your body adapts to aging. So it learns to age. Okay. It's not programmed to age. Wow. It, it, it learns to it's age. It's a shift in paradigm thinking, isn't it? Right. And so, yeah, because it makes sense, right? So if you're, if you're working out, if you're, if you're, if you're moving less, you're eating less, you're doing these things less. And then it's, it's, um, it's the old, it's the old cliche, right? You, you can't teach a old dog new tricks, <laughs> but they're really, really good at the tricks that they know, right? They get better and better <laughs> at their, at their yeah, old more, Yeah, absolutely. And, and, as, and it's no different than if you go to school, you know, you first get in your first week of class, you sit down in a, ta in a, in a chair, and for the rest of this semester, you, you, most people sit in the same damn chair or within a couple, <laughs> or within a couple of places of it, because yes. it's easier. You don't want to think, who wants to get in the room every day and say, I want to think from scratch yep. where I'm going to, 
So if you do, I wear the same clothes every day because I can't be bothered. (laughs) And so your body does that. Your your whole, as it ages, it it learns to to do things more efficiently. And it doesn't it doesn't try as many risky things. Like when you're young, you try a whole bunch of stuff. And when you're old, you say, "Did that? Not going to do it again." (laughs) And so and so so you 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 learn. So you have to unlearn. Like part of anti-aging is learning to be stupid again, right? Because you have, <laughs> like, because because the, it's this, this, this part of, of yeah. exactly. Like you have to be, you know, and and, and you have to have, you have to feel safe enough to do stupid things. Yeah. Right? As we get older, we become more conservative, more careful. We don't want we don't want to lose what we got and this and that. And so it's uh, and we think it's just one thing, like it's not you know, portrait or Dorian Gray type thing. Like you have to, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so that's that's a. Yeah, that's the, so. Well, that's so plasmalogens, yeah. So your body needs to make them. So you need to st- stimulate them. But it's kind of like a vitamin D story. It's very, very. It's theoretically possible, but practically impossible. Okay, in terms of maintaining those high levels. So you and start then losing talking as about, you get older. Yeah, and it's just a no-brainer. It's like a thirty-year difference in lifespan based wow. on your plasma. And so it's it's a big, big deal. And then it stimulates like the cholinergic system that co- for cognition, but. That's just a canary in the coal mine. It stimulates your pituitary gland, your hypothalamus, your thalamus, so your human growth hormone. And these things are all stimulated through the cholinergic innervation of your brain. And wow. malogens, so those, those are the same type of synapses that are st- that, that degrade with cognition. So, and you were saying like with the plasmalogens that you produce at Progr- uh, ProGerm Sciences, you've got the, the glia and the neuro, and they have different, so, and then we've got things like fish oils, which are also plasmalogens, I believe, so omega-3s no. are a type of, no, no, they're not. There's no plasmalogens in fish oil. Fish oil contains the fatty acid, omega-3 fatty acids, which is a piece of a plasmalogen, but a piece, like fish oils are... Um, called triacyl glycerols. Uh-huh. Okay, plasmalogens are ether glycerols. So they're, okay. they're is it like and a precursor start... ingredient part of it? Um, you can think of well, anything that's fat is going to be a precursor. Olive oil. Yeah. In your cupboard, for example, and think of it like a power cord with three outlets on it, and that's called a triacyl glycerol. And in olive oil, you have oleic acid plugged in at all three positions. Fish oil is exactly the same thing, but instead of all of instead of oleic acid, you get DHA plugged into the three different plugs. Or if you take canola oil, for example, it's going to be um, then oleic acid plugged in. Okay, or if you flax oil, which is your your alpha linolenic, you're going to have alpha linolenic. So it's the same structure. So all those triglycerides, and that's what your also your body makes to store in its cells. Plasmalogens instead of having that 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 first outlet it's not it's a fixed outlet okay it's not it's a, it's an ether bond it's a different bond and mm-hmm. and you you don't get that dietarily typically because it bursts apart and right. that that bond actually gets made in the human body your body makes it and that's what makes a difference so, I'm kind so of, when they take your prodrome your your glia or your neuro formulations What's yeah. actually happening in the body? Uh, so, as you said, the digestion, you, you can't get through the digestion, but these right. these parts can? Oh, absolutely. So they're designed to be digested. Like the, the, you, you, I take mine all on a fasting stomach. So they're designed to enter the bloodstream. They're precursors. So like they, they're, they're designed to go in situ. Mm-hmm. Think of um, L-DOPA for Parkinson's, right? Yep. So L-DOPA yep. is basically a supplement manufactured as a drug. Mm-hmm. It's a natural endogenous human intermediate. And it goes into the brain and it goes into the substantia nigra. And it, in the substantia nigra neurons, it gets converted to dopamine. Yep. And so that's why yep. it has this powerful effect. And we don't give dopamine because we can't, it won't make it, won't it there. go through. Yeah. So my plasmalogen precursors are designed the same way. They're designed, it's, the purpose is not to increase your blood levels. Your blood levels are after the fact. The purpose is the supplement. Okay, it's a plasmalogen precursor, and it goes into each of your cells of your body and allows that cell peroxisome to build the build the um, membrane plasmalogens for them. So it's designed to be made, each cell make their own plasmalogens. And that's how you can target. So for an oligodendrocyte that's protecting your white matter, 
it wants to build an omega-9 plasmalogen for its membrane. But when you're dealing with a neuron synapse, say in the nucleus basalis, you're, you want a DHA or an omega-3 plasmalogen. So we, and so the neuro has that prepackaged on it. So when it goes in, that cell can actually make the final plasmalogen. And then, then it has an ether bond, not a vinyl ether bond, so it's completely stable in acid. It gets absorbed and distributed. So you get this, and then you get this, um, it's kind of a two phase. The first phase is like the six to 12 hour kind of symptomatic phase. It actually, you really feel it. Like I love, I take my neuro, like I don't need it, but I technically, but it's uh, like I take, three, four meals every day in the morning. You want to look at 200, so yes. Well, no, it just feels good. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. it gives me energy, mental acuity during wow. the day. And it's, you know, it's, and I think it means, you know, obviously it's about reserve capacity we talked about. It's yeah. having that, um, so like it's reserve capacity is like having a savings account, right? You can technically say, you know what? In order to live, all I need is enough food and a little bit of shelter, okay? And that's it. Well, that's a miserable existence, right? You still want to have a, you know, clothes and this and that. And, and so you, that is what excess reserve capacity allows you to live above basal existence. Yeah, so vitality. Biochemi yeah. Biochemi so vitality is that. Vitality is the little things. It's the little things that give you vitality. And, um, and you need the, those extra cells to have that and that's why you know vitamin supplements like are better than just food like you need good food but when you take a b6 or you take a you know a niacin you're going to get that pharmacokinetic pulse and it can it can drive it into your cells and your cells will catch it and then it'll keep it for a little while and it'll come out again 